Okay, in this video we're going to uh, continue looking at inverse Laplace transforms. In this one we're going to look at some of the more complicated uh, parts of the Laplace transform table. In particular, uh, things where you have sinusoids. So you get some stuff that starts to look a little intimidating. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll either be less intimidated or believe you might become less intimidated. So if you look at these guys that I've just marked in red, um, if you have a sine or a cosine, or an exponentially decaying sine or cosine, you end up with uh, s-squared terms, some of these guys, omega-squared terms. Uh, the omega, you'll notice, is the radial frequency of the sine wave. Um, if you've got the exponentially decaying sine wave, then you've also got alpha and omega. Uh, so things things can get kind of complicated. So uh, let's actually look at a particular example to see what we should do about this, how we might proceed. So let's suppose we're trying to take the inverse Laplace transform of s plus 6 over s squared plus 9. Okay. Now kind of give away a little bit of the story here, but um, you'll notice that this is 3 squared. So I'm going to have an s squared plus a 3 squared. Um, so my denominator here is starting to look like the denominator that I get if I have a sine or a cosine. The problem I have is that my numerator doesn't look like either. And so, uh, by the end of this video, we'll actually work this one by hand to show you how you can get there. But before we do that, let's see what Wolfram Alpha has to say about this. Again, um, if your goal is to just get inverse Laplace transforms as quickly and as painlessly as possible, Wolfram Alpha is probably your friend. If your goal is to get them, uh, to learn how to take them and how to understand them, Wolfram well, Alpha is a useful tool, but it's not going to be uh, your final stop. So let's see. I go to Wolfram Alpha and I say I want the inverse Laplace transform of S plus 6 divided by S squared plus 9. Let it crank on that for a minute and it comes back with the result that says the inverse Laplace transform of that is 2 times the sine of 3t plus the cosine of 3t. And then it helpfully graphs it, gives us alternate forms. Uh, it's just really a very helpful program. Okay. So, again, if our goal is just to uh, uh, get the result, we're done. You can declare victory and go home. But suppose we want to learn, as opposed to just get the result. So, we're looking at this and we're thinking, well, maybe I could take a partial fraction expansion of this whole thing. And that partial fraction expansion would help me take the inverse Laplace transform. So, let's go back to Wolfram Alpha and tell it, instead of taking the inverse Laplace transform, to take a partial fraction. And it cranks on that for a minute, and it tells us that the partial fraction expansion of s plus 6 over s squared plus 9 is just s plus 6 over s squared plus 9. So, going to try to do a partial fraction expansion is not very helpful, at least with Wolfram Alpha, because it's told us that uh, the partial fraction expansion of this thing is this thing. Okay, well, so let's swap tools for a minute. Let's see what happens if we tell MATLAB to take the partial fraction expansion of this guy. So to do that, we define a vector b, which in this case is 1, 6 because I have an s plus 6 in the numerator. I define a vector a, which is 1, 0, 9, because I have an s squared in the denominator and then no 
term that has an s in it, and then 9 is the constant. And then let's tell it to say that um, r comma p comma k is equal to residue of b comma a, and it does the computations, and uh, we'll take these computations back over to the drawing board so we can uh, play with them for a minute. So if you look at these results, this is actually quite a different animal than what, uh, or a different looking animal at least, than what uh, 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 Wolfram Alpha has given us. Uh, I have a, an R, which is 0.5 minus 1i. Uh, for those of you that are engineers and not mathematicians, the engineers would write this as J1, well, minus J1. And so um, I've got uh, a 0.5 plus J1. So you can see that I've got some uh, complex uh, components to R. And I also have P is, uh, P1 is J3, P2 is minus J3. So now I've got complex components to the roots. And I could write this down. So I have, again, R1 over S minus P1 plus R2 over S minus P2. So R1 looks like this. P1 looks like this. Uh, R2 looks like this. P2 looks like this. And it may look to you like we've just actually made a real mess of things because now all of a sudden I've got these complex numbers showing up. Uh, it doesn't look to me like uh, we're any closer to having things that look like this or like this, that we can take the inverse Laplace transform by just looking at it. So it looks a little messy. And what I'm going to do is actually not solve this one right now uh, using the results from MATLAB. We'll come back and, and uh, talk about that in the next video. What I'd like to do is show you one way you can solve this uh, or take the inverse Laplace transform that doesn't involve doing this funny stuff with MATLAB and hopefully we'll show you that uh, Wolfram Alpha got the right answer. Okay. The way I'm, and, and then we'll come back and show you what to do when you can't do something as tidy as what I'm going to, uh, when, when it doesn't work out to be as tidy. Uh, where you actually do have to use the MATLAB values. So we'll save that for the next video. I'm sure you'll all just be hanging um, on the edge of your seats waiting for that one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this s plus 6 and break it into s plus s over s squared plus 9 plus 6 over s squared plus 9. Okay. So again, this is an s. So now you'll notice that this first term, s over s squared plus 9, looks a lot like this guy, where omega is equal to 3. Okay, and so what that means, here we'll get this ugly MATLAB stuff out of the way, because it's probably still scaring you a bit, um, is that this first term is going to transform to cosine of uh, 3t u of t. Okay. Now what do I do about the second term? Uh, I have a 6 here. Well, you'll notice that I can factor the 6 as 3 times 2. And so I can take this term and write it as 2 times 3 over s squared plus 9 squared, or I'm sorry, 9. Uh, here, let's actually clean this up a bit in a way that makes more sense. 
So this is s squared plus 3 squared. Now you can see that this guy transforms to um, sine of 3t u of t. And this 2 is a constant that just comes down here. So I have then that the uh, transform of this expression is cosine of 3t u of t plus 2 sine of 3t u of t. So I've gotten a coefficient, this coefficient in front of the sine term, by factoring 6 into 3. And I knew that I needed 3 here because I have 3 squared down here times 2, which is my coefficient in front of it. So let's see if we got the same thing as Wolfram Alpha. Well, we're going to have to go back to the inverse Laplace transform of this expression. So we do the, we have it compute it, and we have 2 sine of 3t plus cosine of 3t, which is what we've got. So we've been vindicated by uh, Wolfram Alpha, which is always a good feeling. So we're out of time for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll go back and look at what we do when MATLAB starts spewing out all those complex numbers. And it turns out that the num it's not bad, it's not that hard to deal with, but uh, it does take a little bit of thought.